right, so then let's bow our heads and let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for allowing us to come together once again. We ask in a special way, O oh Lord, for the prayer request tonight. Uh, in a special way, we present before you Valerie, O oh Lord. Uh, you know her need. She needs to have that surgery. Uh, 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 Margie, provide it for her, O oh Lord, and, and make sure that, that she will be healed according to your will. Be with Valerie as well, and we ask that you may provide a blessing. Reach uh, in a blessed way, uh, Gary Noel. Uh, we pray for uh, Linda Marvin, for Isabel, for um, uh, Rinku, for um, Dorinda, for Jean Huang, for all of those that are not here, O oh Lord, for San James and Kathy. We pray for um, uh, Vicky Brewer. We, we pray for anybody else who is in need right now, O oh Lord, that you may be able to reach. In a special way, I, I was just reminded that we pray for Marlene. She's waiting for a transplant. And we ask, O oh Lord, please, in the name of Jesus, that you may provide that for her. Uh, that's a special prayer by Emily. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you may listen to that prayer according to your will. Bless us tonight as we uh, uh, get into the Bible. And uh, you may speak to us in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, tonight we are getting welcome. Welcome and happy birthday, right? We have a happy birthday in the house. God bless you. I know it was yesterday, I think, right? So happy birthday. Thank you for being here. I have a few announcements before I get into the topic tonight. And that is we're going to have a marriage vow renewal this Sabbath at 5 o'clock. And what that is, is, uh, is a, a prayer of dedication for couples and also singles. Uh, if you're single, you can have a, a marriage vow with Christ. Um, um, I've done it before here. And uh, you renew your vows with Christ. And that is a powerful statement to do, a powerful thing to do. So you're invited this Sabbath at 5 o'clock. Uh, come, and I hope that you enjoy with us. Uh, following that, in the following week on the 20th, Sunday, and the uh, mandate has been lifted or will be lifted on the 16th, according to the governor today. So therefore, we will have a couple's dinner here at the fellowship hall uh, on Sunday, February 20th at 5 o'clock. So you are invited. If you're single, if you're married, come together and we hopefully we will enjoy. And I know that uh, Daphne and James will be the chefs. They will be cooking for us. Uh, so we pray that uh, the Lord will bless us during that event. Uh, so you're invited. All right. Then we're going to have a new series coming up. Uh, coming up on Wednesday February 23rd, we're going to have a new series, and that is A Church Without Walls, a study on the book of, on the letter of Ephesians. It's a short book, six chapters, but it's a blessed book, and hopefully we're going to learn a lot. Meanwhile, next week, we're going to come to our last study on this series, the book of Romans, Romans and the, uh, the title is, uh, let me see, I forgot the title. The, the Solid Foundation is right here. The Solid Foundation. That's the title for next week. It is the last study on the book of Romans. And tonight, uh, we're going to be studying chapters 12 and 13, the gifts of the Holy Spirit. All right. So uh, in order for me to continue, let me give you a, a highlight of what we studied in our last study last week. We study about chapters, chapter 11. And the engrafted branches and that Israel will be saved and doxology. And we, one of the main things that we discussed was that if the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. Again, if the root is holy, then the whole branches will be holy as well. Right? So uh, basically what, uh, what Paul was arguing in chapter 11 was that you and I have been added to the root, have been added to the batch. Right? And that is the batch of the Jews. The Jews were the first one called by God. And yet, although some of them left, he replaced those with you and I, with the spiritual Israel. And we have become part of God's people as well. So that's what he's talking about. And that's what we studied last week. Uh, this Today, we'll, we'll start the last, uh, the fourth section of the book, Complete Submission is the title of the section. And today... The gift of the Spirit, and next week, the solid foundation. All right, so let me begin by highlighting our first uh, spotlight of the night, 
Uh, it's found in Romans 12, 1 to 8, living sacrifices. And he, uh, I read, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in, the view, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment, in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So in Christ, we who are many form how many bodies? One body. And each member, each member belongs to all the others, right? We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. And if it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Right? So what is he talking about? Living sacrifices. He's talking about church members, you and I, the body of Christ. Right? In the body, we have the arms, we have the legs, we have the knees, and we have the waist, and we have the toes, and, and fingers, and, and feet, and all of the stuff, you know, that form the body. And he says, all of us need to work together. We need to collaborate with each other. We need to love and respect each other. If my finger hurts, my whole body will hurt. That's why sometimes when you pinch your finger, you feel like your whole body is dying, right? When you're, especially when you are pinch, pinching your, your, your hand with, the, with a car, the door, you know, car door. And I've done that before. Somebody, I did it to someone and I, someone has done it to me as well. So it is a bad thing. And although it's just your arm or your hand, you, you feel like you're dying, right? So that's what he's talking about. Willing to leave as redeemed people because we all belong to the body of Christ. Now, when we live as redeemed people, then we give ourselves to Christ as living sacrifices. So uh, my desires, my personal ambitions, my personal gain takes aside because now I do everything for Christ, everything to serve others, right? Living in obedience and in love. That's what we are expected from God. Taking care of people and in need, right? people in need. And that is a good thing to do, right? Laying aside our desires just to follow him. Uh, so that's what living in, uh, in redemption is, right? Now, what are God's plans for you and I? Well, he wants to transform your heart so that you become a blessing to someone else. So he wants to, he wants to make sure that you are blessed so that you can become a blessing to others, right? Uh, he wants to renew your mind. He wants to, uh, he wants to live and honor and obey. We, we need to honor and live and, and obey him, right? So that the Lord, Lord will bless us. And, and that's why, uh, you know, we are in God's plan for our lives. The best for us, he, this is what Jesus wants for you. He wants the best for you. Uh, that's his plan. By giving his son, uh, uh, he has made all of this possible. And, and that's what he has done. So God's plans for you are really good. You are in good hands with God. Uh, and that's a good thing. Now, we as Christians then, uh, we are not to conform to the patterns of the world, the Bible says. Right? That means that if the, if the world is swimming that way, how do you ought to swim? Against the current, right? Sometimes. If, if the world is saying the mainstream is going that way... You have to go the other way. And that's sometimes it's hard to do. Because sometimes the world will ridic ridicule you, will criticize you. He, the, the world will mock you and reject you. But you have to be different. We are different. You know, I remember, and I mentioned here before, that when I became an Adventist 30-something years ago, close to 40 years, uh, I remember I could distinguish between an Adventist and a non-Adventist. Guess what? Not anymore. Not anymore. So for some reason, I could distinguish the Adventists then. Not anymore. We have Adventists from all fields, from all, you know, all um, 
areas coming to us, and sometimes they, they bring stuff with them. And, and that makes them particular. And somehow, we, you know, we, we need to understand that, you know, we are special. We are different. And we don't have to go with this mainstream media, with the mainstream uh, society, right? We, have, we, can, we can just go away from the patterns of the world, from the patterns of the world. We have to go deeper. Uh, the patterns of the world not only deal with behavior and culture and customs. Uh, it, you know, we have to go deeper than that. Uh, it has to be with a transformation. So if we're not going with the pattern of the world, it means that we are being transformed by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, our minds have been renewing by the Holy Spirit, which, is, which brings change to our hearts, right? Now, when the Holy Spirit renews, when He re-educates and He redirects our minds, we then will be truly transformed. And that's the only way we can be changed. By the Holy Spirit. No one else can do this. Not your spouse. Not your children. Uh, not money. Not, not a deed that you would do. No. You can only be changed and transformed by the Holy Spirit. So in order for you to change. What do we need to do? We need to call on the Holy Spirit. Right? We need to pray for the Holy Spirit. Right? When was the last time you prayed for the Holy Spirit? We ought to be praying for the Holy Spirit every day. Every second. Asking God. Lord, send the Holy Spirit. Why? Why is the, the Holy Spirit so crucial? Why? What have we read in John 16 that tells us it's so important to have the Holy Spirit? What is it? What is His job? What is the Holy Spirit's job? The Bible says the Holy Spirit's job is to guide you into all justices. Right? He will convict you. He will convert you. Only through the Holy Spirit that we will be transformed. And when he comes and does that, he does a good job. You will notice a person that has been transformed by the Holy Spirit when you see it. Because he, he doesn't fail. The Holy Spirit doesn't fail. And that's what Christians ought to be doing. The human body, just as the parts of the, our bodies function under the direction of the brain. See, the brain controls everything. Uh, you know, when... when when you are, when somebody's touching your toe, right, and the doctor asks you, do you feel my hand? Yes. You know why that person felt the hand? Because the spirit, the, the brain tells, tells him or her, yes, somebody's touching your toe, right? It's a connection. It's, it is a, a connection of nerves that go all the way through to, to the main center, which is the brain. And therefore, our bodies function under the direction of the brain. Everything, everything in the body does, uh, is like that. So, uh, so are Christians then to work each, uh, we should work each with each other under the command and the authority of Christ, who is the head of the church, right? Um, you know, if we want to study about this, go tonight and study 1 Corinthians 12, 12 to 31, and you will see that Jesus is talking about the body of Christ, the church, and how we ought to be working together. Also in Ephesians chapter 4, when we get there, we'll study that in the following weeks. But uh, what do we need then? You see, our brains, our bodies are, uh, need to be balanced. Uh, we need to have coordination. We need to be, uh, have collaboration between uh, our arms and, and legs. When, when, when something is itching over here in my knee, what is, what is, the, what is my, my brain telling my hand to do? Go and scratch, right? That's the brain that's that, that, does that. See, collaboration, unity, everything is, is, is together. It is interesting that last night I was talking to someone and I was telling that someone about if they know about laminin. How, do you know what laminin is? Anybody knows what that is? Laminin? No? Laminin is a molecule in our bodies, in our cells. It's a protein molecule. And it's so tiny, you can only see it through a microscope. And what is interesting is that when you cut yourself, if you cut yourself, you notice three things. You notice water, blood, but before those two come, something else comes. Do you know what it is? It's like a gluey stuff. Have you touched that before? That this, the blood uh, feels gluey? It's like a glue. You know what that is called? Laminating. That is laminin. Laminin is a cell as a molecular protein that comes and protects your blood system. 
your body. He holds you. He holds you together. Now, there's a Bible text in Colossians chapter 1. And I'm going to read that to you. I don't have it here, but let me, uh, if you have your Bibles, if you can get it. Colossians chapter 1. And I'm going to read that text because it's, uh, it is a powerful text identifying the job of Jesus Christ in our lives. Colossians chapter 1. And I'm going to be reading verse, uh, verse 16, I think it is. Hold on a second. Let me, let me get there. Colossians. Colossians. Where are you, Colossians? After Philippians. Right? Colossians chapter 1, verse 16. Let me see if it's this. Verse 17. Verse 17. You know what? Let me read from verse 15. He is the image of the invisible God. Who is Paul talking about? Jesus Christ, right? He says, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created. So we know that he's talking about Jesus. Because Jesus is our creator, right? And then he says, both in heavens and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones of, or dominions or rulers or authorities, all things have been created through him and for him. Verse 17. Highlight Colossians 1.17. This is the text that I'm telling you. He says, he is before all things. What does that mean? That Jesus is the one. He is it. There's nothing else. You want to be saved? It's Jesus. You want to be forgiven? It's through Jesus. You want to, be, you want to uh, go to heaven? It has to be through him. Jesus is the connection. Jesus is the everything. And then he says, he says, he is before all things. And in him all things hold together. You see, when your body is something's wrong in your body, God sends this laminin, like I told you, this molecule, to save your body, your cells. He keeps the cells together. Let me show you how laminin looks. Anybody knows what I'm talking about? Hold on a second. Hopefully it comes. Because this is amazing. Can anybody see? That is laminin through microscope. You, do you see what is? What are you seeing? Laminin looks like a cross. Somebody tell me. You kidding me. I didn't know God was so humorous. I say humorous. This is powerful. That this molecule keeps your body together. And it's a symbol. It has the form of the cross. Can you believe that? That is incredible. And that's how the human body needs to be together. Right? In unity. Sensible for each other. Having sensitivity. Every body part led by the brain. Like Jesus is, should be led. Uh, is the head of the church. Right? So the human body is a representation of what the church ought to be. Right? My leg, my, my leg is not going to say, your right arm, take it away. I don't like her. Remove her. Are you going to do that? Uh-uh. Right? You'll make sure that you keep it. <laughs> so, so the church members ought to do that. That's why he gives the gifts of the Spirit. So that the church, the body of Christ, will be blessed. And notice here. We have wisdom, we have understanding, we have counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety, fear of God, etc., 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 all the gifts of the Spirit. So why did God give the gift of the Spirit? To do what? To build what? One person? Two people? No, 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 no. The whole church. How? Well, he gives Randy a set of, of gifts. And then he gives Joanne another set of gifts. And Fernando and all of us get a different set of gifts. And then, although they're different, what happens? We complement each other. And the, the, the body of Christ then will be what? Build up. That's how it works. So 
The ch- is to build the church. It's not to highlight one individual or two or three or the pastor or the elders. No, 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 no. This is to highlight, the, to build the church of Christ. This is to encourage all of, all, all of us, to save all of us. Right? Working at, at once. And to use this gift effectively, then we must do the following. Number one, we need to realize that all gifts and abilities come from whom? From God. It's not because I have it, because I have more knowledge than you, and you have to respect me. No. Right? This is the attitude of the Pharisees. Right? They thought they had the knowledge and they had the education. They told Jesus, what school did you come to? You you didn't come to rabbinical school. Did you graduate from AUA? Is that where you went to? Right? Right? Number two, you need to understand that not everyone has the same gifts. Everybody has the, even if you have a twin here, that person will have a different gift, right? Thirdly, you you need to know who we are and what we do best, right? And therefore, when we have different gifts, we provide this gift so that the church will be, uh, you know, helped to grow. And number four, we dedicate our gifts to God's service, not to the highlight of me. Me, myself, and I. No. Right? So God's gifts differ in nature, in power, and in effectiveness. uh, So that everybody contributes to the blessing of the church. So our role, what is our role then in terms of the gifts of the Spirit? We need to be faithful and to seek God. Right? And remain faithful to Him. For example, the gift of prophesying. What is prophesying? Anybody knows what prophesying is? The word prophetes in the Greek means to speak on behalf of. So prophesying is to to bring a message that somebody is sending. So prophesying is you, you are a prophet. You're bringing a message. You become God's messenger, right? Now, uh, is, is this um, gift just assigned to a particular individual in the church, or can anybody be a God's messenger? In fact, everyone has been called by God to be a messenger, right? How do we know that? How do we know that? Can, we, can, you, can somebody look for this passage? 1 Peter 2.9. Can somebody look at that passage and read it for me? I don't have it here, so I'm, I'm, it just came to me, so... 1 Peter 2.9, if you have it, would you raise your hand and would you read it aloud, please? 1 Peter 2.9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So you have been chosen by God. You are his possession. You are a priest, a royal priesthood. For what reason? What is the goal? To do what? To be used by God. Used by God. How? By proclaiming, right? The, by proclaiming the fact that he brought you from the darkness into his marvelous light. So what does that mean? Well, you are basically witnessing and sharing with others what Jesus has done in your life. So all of us have been called by God to do this. To tell others, to prophesy, to tell others God's message in my life, right? So uh, prophesying not always has to do with predicting the future. It is often uh, to preach God's messages. In uh, 1 Corinthians, let me read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I'm going to read verses 1 to 3. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 1 to 3, I read, Pursue love, love. Yet desire earnestly spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For one who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. For no one understands, but it's his spirit. He speaks mysteries. But one who prophesies is speak to men for edification, exhortation, and consolation. Now, let me say briefly, uh, because we're not going to discuss it tonight, but about, about the tongues. The tongues that he's referring to is basically the tongues that appear in Acts chapter 2. You remember when the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost to the church, and we read in the first four verses that the disciples 
you know, they were worshiping God and, and, and uh, uh, pillars of, of fire came upon them, tongues of fire came upon them, and they started speaking in tongues. And then verses 5 through 8, chapter 2 of Acts, we, we have the languages, the tongues that they spoke, and they were known languages, right? They spoke in Greek, in, in French, in Italian, in, in Turkish, in whatever language they had, they had in this area coming to Jerusalem to worship during the Pentecost. You know, people from different countries that came to do the celebrations, they heard them speak in their own languages. So these were known languages and underline that known languages. And that's what prophesying is, right? So it, it is to speak God's language and bring a message. So prophets were God's messengers relaying God's message. As simple as that. All right. So that's one of the things that uh, is highlighted by living sacrifice. The second highlight is love. Now let's read uh, chapter 12, 9 to 12 to 21. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in seal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with God's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Bless those who, those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Uh, do not be proud. But be willing to associate with people of low position. Wow, that's amazing, huh? Do not be conceited, right? Do not repay anyone evil with evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everybody. If it's possible, as far as it deepens on, uh, depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my friends, but leave room for God's wrath. For it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry... Fit him. What it says there? If you're who? Enemy. Enemy. Wow, that's powerful. Fit him. If he's thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals up on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. That is love. Love. Submitting ourselves. Now then, there's an argument here that he talks about submitting to the government. <laughs> and uh, uh, we should never allow government to force us to disobey God. But as long as uh, that is not in place, we have to be obedient to the government, right? To the authorities. We're loyal to God over all things. However, we are expected to be obedient to government if our principles are not being compromised. That is... We have to pay taxes. That is, we have to obey the, the law of the mileage and the road, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? Submitting to the government. In Romans chapter 13, uh, we have an interesting study here that says that uh, many, uh, many people uh, interpret Romans 13 the following way. Number one, uh, that, is the state, that, that the state is so corrupt that we should have as little to do with it as possible. So... It is so corrupt that do not connect with the government. Secondly, that God has given the state authority in certain areas and the church in others. So, yeah, the government has power, but also the church, right? And thirdly, that Christians have the responsibility to make the state better by praying, by being a good citizen, right? And, and you know, but none of these views advocate rebelling against or refusing to obey the government, the government laws or regulation, unless... Those laws clearly required you to violate the moral standards given by God. So if you are forced to break the law of God because of the government ruling, then you, you cannot obey them. You see what I'm saying? You see, love sacrifices. And we have to give people recognition. Authority, willing, willingly, or willingly or unwillingly, people in authority are God's servants. That is very tough to say, especially in today's politics. But that's the truth. Therefore, we need to pray for them while watching them closely, right? Yeah, we need to pray for them, but, you know, we watch just in case. But 
We need to pray for them. And that is a tough thing to do sometimes. Because their authority is God's. In uh, Romans 13, we read the following. Everyone must submit himself to the governor authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, he who rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. Verse 3, for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do not want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and he will commend you. For he is God's servant to, to do you good, you good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for he does not bear the, the sword for nothing. He is God's servant, an agent of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, if it is, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also because of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governor, governing. Give everyone what you owe him. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Paul is talking about something very hurtful for the Jewish church, for the Jews. Why? What is their context? Who is governing in, in Judea? The Rome, Romans. Rome. And, and Paul is saying, oh, no, no, no. You have to, obedient, to be obedient to the Romans. <clears throat> that, is, that is hard to say in, a con in that context. Right? It's also hard to say in this context today. Right? But we have to obey, obey what, what God says. Obeying the law of, God, of love. It supersedes this law of, God, of love. Both religion and civil love. Our in differences with one another cannot be an excuse not to love, right? Jesus does not leave loopholes in the law of, lo uh, of love. Whenever love demands it, we are to go beyond human legal requirements and imitate Christ. Wow, that is tough, right? It is tough because, you know, sometimes people do bad things to you. And what Jesus is asking you is to forgive them and go the extra mile and bless them. That is really tough. Well, Jesus, we know the story, you know, when Jesus was being flagged, he was being hit and attacked by the Roman soldiers. The Bible says that Jesus didn't do anything. He could have called on the angels of heaven, right? And he's, he, no. I imagine the, an, the angels anxious to come and attack Jesus did not allow it, right? He needed to go through that. The Bible in James chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, reads the following. If, however, you are fulfilling the royal law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbors as yourself. You are doing well. But if you show partiality, you are committing sin, and you are convicted by the law as transgressors. Wow. Very clear, right? And then in 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter 2 16 and 17, I read, Act as free men, and do not use your freedom as a covering for evil, but use it as a bond slaves of God. Honor all people, love the brotherhood, fear God, and honor the king. Mm. Wow, strong words, right? But the law of love supersedes. There's nothing that defeats that. Love of the law of God, of love. Now, identifying with him uh, is interesting that he talks about when you are baptized, then you are clothed with Jesus. What does that mean? Well, it means that you are identifying by, with Jesus by being baptized. In Galatians chapter 3, let me read to you Galatians chapter 3 uh, very quickly. Uh, we're going to read verse 27. Galatians 3, 27 and he reads as follows, Galatians 3.27, one second here, Galatians 3.27, For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ, right? That's what it says. So when you were baptized or when you will be baptized next, right, Fernando? <laughs> then what it, what it means, it means that you are clothing yourselves with Christ,
And when you close yourself with Christ, your hatred is gone. Your upsetness is gone. Your, your uh, uh, favoritism is gone. Everything that you have will be gone because now it's Jesus in you, right? And therefore, we identify with him. He baptized us well. He didn't have to, but he did, right? So we identify with him. It shows our solidarity with other Christians as well with the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Uh, the Bible in Romans chapter 6 says that Jesus said, when you're baptized, you're basically being buried under the water and you become when, when they take you out, you become a new creature in Christ. And that's what, so it identifies you a solid, uh, solid, uh, a solidarity with Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. We are then become, ex exemplify the qualities Jesus show while on earth. Love, humility, truth, and service. In a sense, when, when you close with Christ, then in a sense it means that you are role-playing what Jesus would do in our situation. So when you are being attacked, you say, what would have Jesus done? Should I do the same? Or should I, should I attack? Or should I counterattack? Right? No, you ought to be doing what Christ was doing. I, I was doing a Bible study earlier, and we were talking about this, exactly about this, which early earlier. So clothe with Jesus. The, oh, love for the day is near. This is the last section of, of tonight's study. Let not depth remain outstanding, except the continuing depth to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet. And whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in this one rule, right? In, in one rule, and I'm going to talk about it. Love your neighbor as yourself. So notice that, let me, let me identify this. The first four commandments found in Exodus 20, 1 to 17. The first four commandments deal with our relationship with God. It's a vertical relationship with God, right? Do not have other gods. Uh, worship God on the Sabbath, etc. Four, the first four. And then the next six deal with our relationship horizontally with each other. Um, you know, respect your parents. Uh, do not commit adultery. Do not murder, right? Do not covet. All of those. So, so this is what he's talking about. All of this that he has mentioned here has to do with the ones that deal with our loss to our neighbors, right? So uh, that's why he's, he's talking about here. And then he says, verse 10, love does not harm to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this, understand in the present time, the hour has come for you to make up from your slumber because our salvation is nearer now than when we started, we first believed. The night is nearly over. The day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us behave decently as in the daytime, not in orgies or drunkenness, not in sexual immorality or debauchery, not in dissension or jealousy, jealousy, jealousy. Rather, close yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Uh, you know, his argument is very powerful. Why is he talking about this? Why is he is, he's encouraging the Roman church to basically clothe themselves with Christ and act like Christians? Why? Because Jesus is about to return. Now, he spoke to them in year 53. Jesus had left in year 31. So 21, 20 years after Jesus left, Paul is already predicting that Jesus will come back again soon. So he's saying before he returns, you, need, you ought to be doing this, right, as church. That's why he's recommending uh, what he's recommending tonight, that we ought to have the gift of the spirits. So he says, we live in a dark world, but Jesus is about to return, right? Uh, so we cannot afford to lose our salvation for not obeying either God nor the human governments, Ooh. right? The day of the Lord is upon us. And we need to be ready when? Today. Therefore, we need to get rid of dissension, jealousy, jealousy, the obvious sins like orgies, drunkenness, sexual immorality, etc. Our attitudes, even as well, need to be changed, need to be in check in order to avoid hate, hatred that leads to murder, jealousy that leads to strife, and lust that leads to adultery. So we really have to pay attention to our attitudes as well, our reactions, our body language, our character, right? Because Jesus is about to return. Now, 
The, questions I have, the question I have for you tonight then, do you think that the gifts of the Spirit are essential for you? Yes or no? Do we need the, spirit, the gifts of the Spirit? Definitely. Because they will help us to build what? The body of Christ, right? Notice, this is beautiful. I found this and I said, I have to have this. Obey your thirst, right? Rather than sprite, it's spirit. And then it says, if anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink, right? Very powerful. Now, what do we need? The gift, the, the baptism of what? Of the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? Well, Nicodemus asked the same thing, and he was a theologian of Israel. He was a teacher of Israel. He said, how can a man be born when he's old? And surely, he said, he cannot enter again into the second time into the mother's womb to be born, right? And Jesus said, what did Jesus say? I tell you the truth, that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. What does that mean? That we not only we need to be baptized, yes, but we also need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Hmm. Very powerful. What does that mean? That the Holy Spirit is essential in our way, in our process of sanctification until we meet Jesus. We need to have the Holy Spirit. We need to pray more for the Holy Spirit. We need to call on the Holy Spirit. We need to tell God, can you send the Holy Spirit to me? Right? Because the Spirit is essential. So do we need the gifts of the Spirit in your life? Yes or no? Yes? Do we need the baptism of the Spirit in your life? Yes or no? So then, if so, then my question is, would you like, like to accept the ministry of the Holy Spirit for your life? Would you like to care raising your hand, saying, I want the, the ministry of the Spirit in my life? Amen. God bless you. So let me pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for a beautiful day. Thank you for allowing us to come together and study the Word of God and to realize that we need the Holy Spirit now more than ever. We need to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. We need to uh, have the conversion come, that comes through the Holy Spirit. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to you, the salvation of humanity. And we ask, O oh Lord, in a special way that everyone here will be able to be saved that you may forgive our sins and that our names will be written in the book of life. Bless each and every one of us tonight. Bless our church in a mighty way and help us to remain faithful to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you again. Next week, we conclude this series by studying the last two chapters, the solid foundation, Romans 14 to 16. And in two weeks, we're going to start a new series, A Church Without Walls, a study of the book of Ephesians. All right, God bless you. Have a good night.